It's the summer solstice extravaganza, a festival unlike any other in the world. Join us for five days and five nights in the beautiful Caribbean island of Antigua. Come and full joy the pristine, beautiful beaches. The historical sites on the island tour. Indulge in the experience of the cannabis tour. And of course, the sunrise and the sunset hike to Green Castle Hill. The Stonehenge of the Caribbean amongst the megaliths that align with the stars. Remember that this is an all-inclusive wellness event. To include your plant-based fully vegan meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, transportation and accommodation will be provided for, plus yoga, meditation, and chalice talk with the Honorable Priest Isaac. Plus, meet and greet with family and friends and with the whole Rastafari experience and Tiga team. Join us again from the 19th to the 23rd of June for the Summer Solstice Extravaganza. To reserve your space today, visit our website priestisaacinstitute.com or email us priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. The 19th Psalm of the Bible says that the heavens declare the glory of God. But before the Psalms were written, mankind has been observing the movements of the astronomical clock. From the Adam's calendar to Nocta Playa, the Great Pyramid of Giza, Anka Tom and Anka Wat, and the Great Green Castle. What is ancient astronomy? Where the stars meet the stones? What is ancient astronomy? The mother of archaeoastronomy and astrotheology. Before the Holy Bible, the Big Veda, the Popol Vuh, and even the Meduneta, the original scroll, the heaven, has been declaring the glory of the universe. What is ancient astronomy? Order your copy. Today. Oh, yes, blessed love, DJ and everyone. Give thanks to the life giver and the keep of life, Emperor Haile Selassie the first, of course, in all good doings and saints. Welcome you to another edition of the Tiger's Nest right here on Radio Anu. A beautiful evening. Talking about the international flavor, the universal spice priest Isaac institute.com that's priest isaac institute.com and of course i'm your humble servant for the moment i'm your humble host the honorable priest isaac yes it's now the, now is the time yes we are getting close to the spring equinox but we are highlighting the summer solstice from the 19th to the 23rd of june you just saw it there a moment ago i would encourage all of those who have it in their mind for in fact you would have had it in your mind for a long time to come and visit us here in Wadadli, in Antigua, to spend a moment with us, uh, five days and five nights with the Honorable Priest Isaac. We're talking about the full family Rastafari experience, Antigua. Give thanks to the Honorable Prophet Andre Rastre, and of course the full team. And you don't know, 
double height the green castle hill the summer solstice so family you know how it is every time we do this you say man one of these days i'm going to be there this is the day for you to be there so get yourself in order you still have you still have time you have at least three 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 more months you know ahead of you where you can prepare yourself prep yourself get your time off you know, and put everything in order for the summer solstice extravaganza. Get a friend to come with you. As you can clearly see, everything is fully legitimate right here with us. Rastafari experience Antigua. So just contact us. You know what to do. And of course, this is being, this is being premiered. At least some part of this program will be premiered on the YouTube. So specifically, the link is in the description below. For those who do not know, <laughs> and those who are on the radio, and who you are already on the website already, yeah, so you can definitely make your reservation to join us. I'm talking about for the summer solstice in June, definitely from the 19th to the 23rd. Beautiful. What we're going to do this evening, and I'm going to go straight into it, we're going to be, you know, prepping you for Sunday. And for those who do not know, Sunday is Shiva, Aksu, and the Ark. So we've been doing a series of programs right here on the Tiger's Nest. And those who are not always in tune with the Tiger's Nest, you would have been missing a lot of good information, I must uh, tell you. So, so this is why I myself, that usually it's the engineer's decision, but this evening I decided to premiere at least some part of the program specifically on the YouTube. But as I said, family, you would have to join us on Radio Anu to get the rest of the program this evening. And the link is in the description below. Those of you who are watching on the international television, I'm talking about Radio Anu TV. Now, what I want to do this evening is to somewhat concentrate on the Shiba as aspect of Shiba Aksum and the Ark. A touch of the Aksum, but it's more the Shiba aspect of the Ark and um, um, the, the, uh, the lecture I want to highlight. And one of the reasons for this lecture, and again, just touching my brethren side for Selassie as he highlighted the spirit of the Ark the other evening, you know, one of the reasons for this presentation on Sunday, remember it's this Sunday, the 24th. One of the reasons is to really bridge, I want you to hear me good, bridge the, the legend of the Queen of Sheba and the legend of the Ark with the historical reality. Now, we're not going to be guessing and we're not going to be fantasizing and you know your brother is not going to get romantic about it. This is why, again, we are thankful for this colony presentation, very mystic presentation the other evening um, from the good brother Cypher Selassie, which honestly, that would have assisted us going into that lecture on Sunday, even highlighting the, the, the spirit of the ark and how it connects to the king's list, etc., etc. It just validates the reality of what is before us. Those who are denying the Ethiopian king's list, wake up. <laughs> wake up. I mean, the science has been proven. I'm telling you for sure. I'm, I, I'm on board with that one there. So what we want to do this evening again we want to just take a look at the Queen of Sheba. Before Sunday, before Sunday, make sure you get your 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 uh, your your e-ticket for Sunday. And remember it's only $20. If you are a subscriber to the Tigers Nest Radio program, you know you do not have to um pay uh, to enter. Now, as I said, this evening we want to highlight the Queen of Sheba aspect of it. And uh, sometime in this strong. I am going to also look at the Queen of Sheba in Nigeria. I don't know how much of a, a key part is going to be <laughs> in the lecture on Sunday to be to, to be square with you, but it's a very important aspect. Anyway, the Queen of Sheba is said to have been, you know, that's where we're going to highlight 
as well. In fact, according to the Nigerian legend, the Queen of Sheba is buried in Nigeria. How many of you have heard that? We would have talked about that, uh, spoken about that already right here on the Tiger's Nest. In fact, we did a whole program concerning that, the Queen of Sheba's gravesite. In fact, you can go to Nigeria and see the gravesite. Mm -hmm. We're the Queen of Sheba. The same Queen of Sheba that visited Solomon is buried according, according to those who uphold that tradition uh, in Nigeria there. So that's somewhat removed from the ancient kingdom of Kush or the ancient kingdom of Aksum or the ancient kingdom of Ethiopia as we know the story of the Queen of Sheba. But anyway, let us concentrate here for, for the moment. Now, what I want to do first is to look at the whole concept of the kingdom of Kush. Because again, and I I always like, like, you know, when 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 my good brother Ankoma Jed highlights, you know, the importance of being able to go through history, understanding timeline and geography. You know, he may not have said it like that, but he would bring this up from time to time when it comes to the kingdom of Kush, especially when it comes to trying to decipher, you know, who is the queen, uh, uh, Makeda or uh, Queen Candace that met the Ethiopian official that came, you know, um, from Jerusalem, according to the book of Acts and met Philip, the, the disciple of Christ and was baptized. He was from the court of queen. Candace, and again, Candace is Candake, by the way. And, and again, the brother would bring up uh, uh, a very good point from time to time that we must understand that the, the kingdom of Kush, which we will highlight tonight, the kingdom of Kush, when you say Kush, or even Ethiopia, I should say, in the Bible, when sometimes when it's speaking of Ethiopia, it's actually highlighting the kingdom of Kush. I want you to hear me good. When it's speaking of Ethiopia, sometimes, because it's not every single aspect of the Bible where you see Ethiopia uh, means that it has the same boundaries as even the Ethiopia today or the Ethiopia in the New Testament and the Ethiopia in the Old Testament. There's nothing to be ashamed about with that, you know. Again, no need to be romantic. We just need to be realistic, <laughs> fair enough. So again, when we study history, you know, uh, uh, as, as it relates to the kingdom of Kush. Sometimes we just broad brush it over, I guess, Ethiopia and Sudan. And then sometimes we would speak of the whole of Northeast Africa was once Kush and once Ethiopian, all of this. But we want to put it in context. You know, where the White Nile meets the Blue Nile in Khartoum in Sudan the place that most people refer to as Nubia, which some scholars actually denounce that term, you would find the ancient kingdom of Kush. Then you'd have to get into kingdoms like Naparta and Meroe and, and you know, Tar Seti, one of the more ancient of kingdoms. And they would all have been a part of what we would call the ancient kingdom of Kush. Now, again, this kingdom of Kush that most of us refer to was really situated in the region known today as uh, uh, Sudan. Now, the kingdom of Kush, like many other kingdoms, would have expanded as well. And in its expansion, we know of the great 25th dynastic period of Kemet. And at that time, the kingdom of Kush definitely went beyond the borders of modern-day Sudan and went into ancient Kemet, going all the way into the Levant. Because, of course, you know, the 25th dynastic period of Kemet is really the Sudanic um, rulership, as some once referred to it as the Black Pharaohs. But, of course, we know the ancient Kemetic um, kings, the Nesut Beti, were Africans, without a doubt. We don't even have to try to get into that. So we're looking at a time frame now around um, uh, 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 1000 BC, 700 BC, between there, where you have the, the kingdom of Kush 
expanding throughout all Northeast Africa. So again, we need to comprehend that there was a time frame where you had the kingdom of Kush, which is again where the White Nile meets the Blue Nile. But then again, we would have spoken about the, the kingdom of Seba, which, which is what we would refer to as the kingdom of Sheba. And this is seen in parts of modern day Ethiopia, plus as well as Arabia. Now, the reason why I am mentioning this with understanding is so that we as a family could gather the reality now that the kingdom of Sheba was not necessarily the kingdom of Kush. The kingdom of um, Damat, also you would see it as DMT, was not necessarily the kingdom of Kush. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we are very easy to broad brush all of these places as the kingdom of Kush. It's very important. I come to realize that as a student of history, you need to comprehend your dates and you need to comprehend your geography. So maybe in times gone by, the area that is known as Demat or DMT as you would see it, maybe that was a part, that area may have been a part of a, a more ancient kingdom of Kush. You comprehend. The same thing can be said of the kingdom of Aksum. We're in Aksum today. Look at Aksum today. Aksum today is not necessarily the, the broader, wider kingdom of Aksum, which would have gone again into some parts of Sudan, uh, um, South Sudan, which is really the official country today, and even engulfing the same Demat, etc., etc., the same Saba, which is Sheba, because Aksum would have gone into Arabia as well. But again, we're looking at time frame. So we're dealing with at least from 3000 BC to the modern time. That's like 5,000 years. You know, kingdoms rise, kingdoms fall. You know, whether you have a uh, um, relationship that went sour amongst ones and brothers that determines boundaries and borders. So again, we have to comprehend history, comprehend geography, with history, especially when we are going to apply timelines and dates to these events and the places. I hope you get and gather and comprehend what I'm saying. And the reason why I'm saying this, you know, so that we can be very scholastic in our conversation. That's how it is with me. So when we just start to talk and say, yeah, man, when you're reading the Bible, Ethiopia, when you're reading the Bible, Ethiopia, you're talking about the kingdom of Kush. And then we just leave it there and that's it and no question. So where is Kush? Yeah, man, Kush is Nubia. You know, Kush is not, it, not Ethiopia, Ethiopia. But then again, there was a time. You understand? Where the people, the, the Kushite kingdom would have gone into modern day Ethiopia as well. But then again, as I said, you could look at Aksum as being similar because Aksum is not necessarily Kushin. Where the kingdom would have expanded and yet still the, the, the city of Aksum today, not necessarily a kingdom, is the Aksum of now. So in the next 200, 300 years, when you tell the story of Aksum, how would you tell the story of Aksum and where would Aksum be at that time in the next 300 years? So anyway, all of this, you know, is just to somewhat, maybe just to shake up the thoughts, you know, because sometimes, you know, we don't want to get lazy in our studying and lazy in our thinking and lazy in our meditation. We want to be sharp and understand the history. So when we have to speak of it, we can speak of it with, with, with confidence. Very, very important. Now, again, give thanks for those who would be just coming in. Give thanks. This is the Tiger's Nest. This is Radio Anu, the International Flavor, the Universal Spice. Let me just remind all of those who are on radio and TV again, which is the YouTube. Uh, remember that, of course, this is the Radio Anu's version of the Tiger's Nest radio program. So we are broadcasting from the Tiger's Nest from PriestIsaacInstitute.com. So at some time throughout this program, this uh, streaming will come to an, an end on the YouTube. 
and for you to get the rest of the program, all you have to do is to press the link in the description below the video and come straight to radio. I know, and it's going to be great a little more in the program because we are going to be hearing from, you know, what you would refer to as the professionals for sure. We're going to be hearing from uh, uh, Dr. Solange Ashby, and she is an archaeologist specifying in, in Nubia. And also we'll be hearing from Dr. Shadaya uh, Taha, and she's also an archaeologist, and she, um, I think she, uh, she, she, um, she's a professor, pardon me, at Cambridge University, and she specializes in the Kushite kingdom as well. So this is going to be a very serious vibration this evening, and I want you to hear the information that they have to give us. In fact, let me just tell you this. In fact, we are going to be highlighting them in great detail on Sunday. I'm talking about for the lecture. I'm talking about Sheba Aksum and the A. So make sure that you are there. Now, I want to highlight, at least for now, one of the eight highlighted Kandakes according to history. Now, this is important, and this is where you will be able to see as well the, the difference between even the Kushite kingdom and the ancient Ethiopian kingdom as well. Because remember, the Kushite kingdom has its kings list as well. You understand. And there, there's a list, again, of specific Kandake queens that would have ruled. Now, in the Ethiopian king list, you have Kandakes too. They're numbered, I think, up to seven. You understand. But when you look at the, the, the king's list, or oh, pardon me, the list of the queens, the Kandake or Kush, it is not exactly the same as that of Ethiopia. So you can see that they, they actually, if you, know, if you are a, um, a scholar, then you will consider that you're looking at two separately sovereign kingdoms. What say you? I hope you understand what I'm saying here, and I, I hope I'm clear. So I just want to highlight for a moment one Kandake Amarinas, and she was considered to be the one I um, uh, Kandake, and she said to be that great queen which would have defeated the Romans and defended the kingdom of Kush when the Romans came in and, and defeated uh, uh, a lot of Egypt, took in a lot of Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet. And it is said that around 22 BCE, when they came in to, 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 to battle the Kushite kingdom, it was that queen that was on the front line and defeated them, that Kandaki, I should say, in all ways, you know, in all decisive ways. And she's gone down as a great tactician, a great general, a great warrior. That's why when you see her, you see her even grasping her enemies and she's seen larger than her enemies, which is also a symbol of royalty and a symbol of wealth. You see her holding her enemies by their hair and you see her with her sword in one hand and you see her with her sword in the other hand ready to slew because she is a conqueror. So when you hear of the Candace of the Bible, when you hear of the Candace of history that stopped Alexander the fake when he himself was trying to come into the kingdom of Cush, you know, when you hear of, again, the Makeda, I want you to hear me good, just in case you may not be privy to this knowledge. When you hear about the Makeda of the Bible, Makeda is, is a Kandake. So the Ethiopians now also speak about the Queen of Sheba, which is referred to as Makeda. But just as Sheba is not her name, you know, she is the queen of the Seba, Sheba. Sheba is not her name. Makeda also is not 
necessarily her name. Makeda is like Mary. Makeda is a title. Makeda is a royal title. That's why in the Bible you have many Marys. So you have, of course, Mary, the mother of Christ. And then you have Mary Magdalene. And then you had the other Mary. And then about four Marys came with the original Mary when they went to the tomb of Christ. So Mary, and you have Miriam in the, the Old Testament, which they all represent water, taken out of water. So, so the Mariam or Mary is really a symbolic title. Even Yeshua, you know, you sure? I'm very sure. You understand? He came ashore because he was born out of the water. I'm very sure. Eh? So that's why you have Joshua, Joshua. And there's several Joshua's in the Old Testament. These titles. So Makeda, Candace, where you get Candy and these different names. She's sweet. Candace is, is really a, a, a European form as such of Makeda, which still is another form of the Kandake. So I want you to gather this good. You know, this is just preparation again, you know, for those who may, again, may not even be privy to this level of information and saying, yeah, I think I get it now, but it's much, there's much, 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 much more to gather, get, receive, understand it. So, so just highlighting, Again, these queen mothers, because they they stand out in history as fierce warriors or warriorses, if you want to use that term in this case, just like, of course, what is known as the, the homey warriorses, also referred to as the Amazon queens. So again, we have Queen Amarinas, and she really stood out. It is said that she would have ruled now as, as queen defending the Kushite kingdom. She was queen to her husband, but she ruled for a short time as a, a uh, sovereign ruler within her own right as such. And that was after his death. And she literally came to the throne. And according to the history, she would have ruled from, listen to this, the end of the first century BC to the beginning of the first century AD. And this is the time frame given to Queen Amani Rinas. Now, they would have had, again, uh, uh, several queens, Kandake queens. Some, some highlight eight, but of course, there are other historians that highlight other queens, especially the fact that the queens would have um, ruled with a king. But the, the Nubian queens, the, the Kushite queens specifically, had their own rights as a woman when it was time for them to take the queenship or the rulership of the throne. You know, even the king, even the king, it is said that the king had to be a child of a queen mother, which is a Kandake. So as much kings as you had, you had to have had the similar amount of uh, Kandake, queen. Then you have another great queen, Amane Tore, and she herself also, she ruled a bit after uh, um, Queen Amane Rinas, but again, for a very short time. Now, what I want to highlight here with the whole concept of the Kandake, and this is where I want to get. In the Ethiopian chronicling of the kings and the queens, the Ethiopian kings list, you also have the Kandake. You have uh, the Kuta Kandake, she was 740 to 730 BCE. You have Nikawala Kandake the second. She was 342 to 332 BCE. You have uh, Akawasis Kandake the third. 
She was 325 to 315 BCE. You have um, Nicosis Kandake the fourth. She was 242 to 232 BCE. I don't know if you're taking any notes. And you have Nicotris Kandake. Um, she was 35 to uh, 25 BCE. And then you have Gersimoth Kandake. Gersimoth Kandake the sixth. And she was from 40 to 50 BCE. Now, um, um, that specific Kandake, Garcimuth Kandake, was considered to be the Kandake that was the queen at the time of the visit of the Ethiopian eunuch to Jerusalem and when he met, of course, the disciple of Christ which is Philip. Now, of course, the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian's kings list is a very extensive kings list. And uh, although you see many aspects of the Kushite kingdom's energy within it, you also get a lot of Kemetic aspects within it. We would have done a whole program. I think we would have done two programs um, specifically on the Ethiopian king's list. It's a king's list that deserves to be studied. And I don't, I don't think there's anyone right now that can deny the reality of it, especially how the good brother would have unraveled to me. Anyone that denied it, they just didn't understand what the brother brought forward. Believe me, take it from me. I, I understand how that feels. So, so again, just highlighting to the family the importance of knowing history. Again, we're just kind of putting this in order because in a few moments now, we're gonna to go to the, the professors. We're gonna to go to the archeologists. We're gonna go first to uh, Sister Ashby, Shalon, Shalon, uh, Solange Ashby. And um, she actually says that Amirinas was the queen that visited that was visited, that um, um, whose eunuch, pardon me, was met by the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch that was met by the disciple of Christ. That's what she said. You're going to hear it for yourself in a moment. Um, that's interesting because the time frame would not really align. In fact, remember that uh, that queen would have passed in 10 BCE, AD, pardon me. So, or CE, CE. So if she would have passed on in 10 CE, uh, she would have passed on when the Christ child was just that, a child. So, but according to Sister Ashby, uh, she is the expert. She's saying that that was the queen that met the Ethiopian Yuna. Now I'm showing you clearly that uh, contemporary analysis does not say that. That is for sure. Just take it from me. Contemporary analysis does not say that. Contemporary analysis really gives it to the queen um, that is seen on the Ethiopians' kings list, which obviously would have made even a more sense when you really comprehend that because the time frame is is basically a line. That's the sixth Kandeki Garcima. And let me say here, when you observe the Kandeki's queens list, basically, you know, the, the, the warrior queens that history would have highlighted actually came to an end basically somewhere around the fourth century. You get that? The fourth century. Uh, so so that is very important to look into. All right, this is some serious vibration, um, royal family. Um, this is why, you know, it is good that we have uh, such knowledge and, and information that we can rely upon. Very good. Now, what I want to do right now, as I said, we are going to be definitely going into an audio and you will hear for yourself the good uh, archaeologist from Nubia giving us a good understanding now of the warrior queens from Nubia. You're going to hear um, also Professor Taha 
from the Cambridge University. She will be speaking. She's a Sudanese, by the way, but she's the professor at Cambridge University. She also will be highlighting the importance of the role of the, the Kandake in Nubian history, in Kushite history as well. This is very, very important. So as I said, family, all of this is just preparation here for Sunday, the 24th day of March. I am hoping that ones have already, you know, secured their space. Yes, you know, we had a $15 offer uh, for that event on the 24th. Well, the 15th of March would have passed. So now it's only $20. It's going to be a very helpful lecture. I'm looking forward for everyone to be in the house. And remember, even if you subscribe to the Tiger's Nest uh, this evening, you understand what I'm saying? You definitely will definitely get your free pass to come in on Sunday. Plus, he'll be getting a month's worth of the tiger's nest. I don't know how on earth a one could lose from that one there. So I'm just encouraging everyone that is listening. We're going to go deeper now. The tiger's nest has just begun. Eh? We just began. But we're going to seal up the stream on the YouTube right now. So what you need to do is press the link in the description below this video and join us on Radio Anu, PriestIsaacInstitute.com. So again, press the link in the description below the video and join us on Radio Anu, PriestIsaacInstitute.com and let us continue this beautiful discussion and we're going to hear from the experts. <laughs> Give time. What is the story behind the Queen of Sheba? What is the truth behind her visit to the great King Solomon? The Ark of the Covenant and the Kebron of Gas. Prepare for an intriguing look at the true history of the Kingdom of Aksum, Lalibela, and the Ark of the Covenant. Join us on the afternoon of Sunday, the 24th day of March, 3 p.m. Eastern Caribbean time for the very timely lecture entitled Sheba, Action, and the Ark. Admission to this lecture only $20. $15 before the 13th of March. To register and get your online ticket, visit the website priestisaacinstitute.com or email us priestisaacinstitute.com at gmail.com Be there!